Hi there, my name is Damien and in today's demonstration I'm going to show you how you can implement trigger conditions on your Power Automate flow. So if you've ever used a condition action as one of your primary steps within your flow in order to check that maybe a value within a list for instance is equal to something or that it's not empty and then you branch out yes to continue with your flow if the conditions met or no in order to terminate your flow prematurely then trigger conditions might be for you. I'm going to explore a few different scenarios, show you how easy it is to implement, and hopefully from that you can take it away and give it a shot yourself. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump into my demonstration. So here I am in my Power Automate flow, and um, my scenario here is such that I only want my flow to play out if the new file that's been created is an Excel file. So of course, instinctively I use a condition, and in that condition I check that the file name, including extension, ends with XLSX. Now if that condition evaluates as true, it'll go down the yes branch, and of course we'll send an email to let me know that an Excel file has been created. If it's a .doc or a .pdf, i.e. the condition is false, we'll go down the no branch and the flow will terminate. So in order to test this, I'm going to go into the manual test. We'll stick it into test mode. I'll jump into my document library here. And I am going to drag a Word document up into our, our document library here. And then jump back to my run history, which is now completed. And we can see that the condition is evaluated false and it has gone down the no route and no further action has occurred within my flow. So trigger conditions mean that your flow will only run if the condition of the trigger is met, if it's true. And so we can actually bring this requirement um, here up into our trigger. And where we do that is within the settings. So you can see here at the bottom of the settings, we've got trigger conditions. And this is where you can add and you can type in an expression. So if you're familiar with expressions already, you can go ahead and type them in. They must begin with the at and then you could have the expression contains and start filling out your various um, expressions to call that dynamic content. Now there is a much easier way of doing this. I'm gonna cancel out of here and it's using the filter expression or filter array uh, action. And that actually has an advanced edit mode which allows you to see the expression being built up so we can choose the value, which is the file name with extension. We want it to end with, and the string it needs to end with is the XLSX. Now if I go into the advanced mode, I can see the full expression, which I can simply highlight and copy to my clipboard. If I go back into basic mode, you can basically implement any of these various checks on the string you have here. So you can have it equal to, containing, greater than if it was a numerical value. But one of the things to bear in mind if you are doing comparisons with numerical values, you might need to convert um, both the uh, dynamic and the string into an integer. So you might need to use the integer expression. But for the purpose of today's demo, I now have that uh, expression copied to my clipboard. I can delete the filter array. I can go back into the settings. I can go into the trigger conditions and paste in that uh, expression there that checks for the file extension. And this condition is now redundant. So I can actually bring this email action out of my condition. I can delete that condition action because I now know that once this flow is saved, it's only ever going to run if that trigger condition is met. And the great thing about that too is in the flow history, I'll only ever see the runs where that trigger condition is true. So we'll put it back into test mode. I'll put it into manual. I'll go back to my document library and I'm going to upload a series of documents which are Word documents and also a JPEG. And so if I jump back onto my Cloudflow, it's still sitting there waiting because at the moment that trigger condition hasn't been met. The file extension does not end with XLSX. But if I drop an Excel file into that document library 
And if we just jump back to our cloud flow, patiently waiting, I can hear the emails come in. I know the flow has run. So based on that file extension, the flow has run and it's sent me that email, which we can see here. Ooh, a new file has been created. And then if we go back onto our Cloudflow run history, and whilst I have been doing testing throughout the day, you can see that at 11.04, I've only got one run, and that's despite having uploaded several files to the document library earlier. So the history is nice and neat. It's only relevant to the triggers that were met that evaluated as true. So how else might you use trigger conditions? So I think another great example is in SharePoint lists. So here I have a SharePoint list, and if I go ahead and uh, edit this uh, item here, we can see we've got a priority, and that priority for this particular list item is low. Now we do have a critical priority, and I might want to run a flow whenever the critical priority is logged against a new item. So what I might do here is I'll go and create a new flow, which is based on when an item is created. And the first thing I'll need to do, of course, is to choose that SharePoint site and, and uh, SharePoint list. So we'll just go and pick my SharePoint site and my SharePoint list. And so traditionally what I might do is go ahead, pick the condition, and I can go and uh, uh, put together the, the dynamic content there to check for the value critical. But what I'm going to do instead is I am going to use the filter again because it's a, a nice way of building up my expression. Um, and I'm going to choose the priority. So we'll just do a quick search here for priority. And in this case, we're going for the value. And we want it to be equal to critical. Now, if we go into advanced mode, again, we can see our express expression. We can hit the control C. And uh, now I can delete that filter array. And I can create my next step, which again, I'm going to use send an email. And the purpose here is to alert myself or anyone else in the team that we've had a critical issue logged. And we can uh, put in the item description. And again, I need to go into the settings. And with that expression that I've copied, I can paste it in and hit done. And there we go, it's ready to run. So if I hit the save, I will put it into the test mode again. I'll go into my issue tracker and I'm actually going to create, first of all, a, a new, first of all, um, a, a basic low issue. So I need a new keyboard this time. So keyboard isn't working all the time. And I'm going to make that priority normal. And we're going to go ahead and save that. Now, of course, that's not going to meet the trigger condition. So no flow is going to run. But I'm going to hit new again and say need new PC for new employee. And we're going to make that uh, critical. I'm just going to copy that issue into the description as well. I'm going to hit save. And if we just jump into our flow here, which is still waiting. Again, I've heard the email ping, so I know that my flow is just completed. So based on that trigger matching, it's it's critical. We've sent an email. I've got that email now in my inbox saying a critical issue has been logged. And if I go back to the run history, because this is a brand new flow, I've created two items, but you can actually specifically see that I only have the one run. So again, just a demonstration that if you're using the trigger conditions, if that trigger condition evaluates as false, it will not appear in the history. Um, but we've saved a couple of actions running and a couple of triggers running by using that condition. So my final example is going to be based on when an email is received. And uh, if I go and create again a new flow, so when a new email arrives, there are actually already trigger conditions pre-built into this action. And so you can see if I go into the advanced mode here, we can do a filter on the subject to look for a particular string. 
but what if that string contained two keywords and those two keywords could be in any order? So if we went for hairy coconut and uh, someone put coconut hairy in the subject, then this particular um, string here, if I could spell coconut, this particular string here would not evaluate if someone sent the subject line as coconut hairy. But if we use trigger conditions, we can actually check for multiple strings. So what we do is, again, we can create a new step. We can go into the filter array because it's my nice convenient way of creating these expressions. And we want the subject to contain coconut. If I could spell, terrible. So coconut. So if I edit in advanced mode, I can see we have this expression here. I can copy that and I can go into my trigger settings and into the trigger conditions. I can paste the coconut, but then I can go ahead and add in a condition again, which will evaluate as well because these are all evaluating as and they must all be true. And I can put in the word hairy and uh, I might put in another one as well saying um, young. Now if I hit done and save that I'm going to just delete the filter array. I'm going to put in a new step here and just simply a compose just to show that the the flow has run. We'll put in the subject line here and I've put the subject filter in for hairy coconut but I'm just going to I'm just going to remove that and hit save. And we'll put this into test mode into our manual mode again. And I'm just going to bring up the mailbox of another user I have on my tenant here, another test user. And we're going to create a new message and it's going to go to Damien and it's going to say I like Coconuts, oh, nuts. They are yum and a bit hairy. I wonder if the trigger condition will work. Well, let's give it a go. So we'll hit the send button. And I know that a new email, I know that this email from, from my colleague Dave has been received. If I go into my flow that's set up waiting to trigger, it should be looking for hairy, coconut and yum. I can see the flow has run successfully. And uh, I've, I've output the, the subject line just to show or demonstrate that that's worked. Now, if I sent an email saying I like hairy coconuts, this trigger wouldn't run. And just to uh, prove that, we can put it into test mode again. But what I'll also show you is how to use the OR expression, which can check for one of many of uh, those strings. If one of them is contained, it will run. So we'll go back into the test mode. I'm going to go and load up my other inbox. I'm going to send myself uh, a an email again and we're gonna say hairy cocoa nuts and hit send now I heard the email appear in my inbox but this flow is not going to run because it doesn't contain that important word yum so just to keep that flow happy I'm just gonna do Hey, coconut yum. Hit send. We'll get that flow to, to finish and I'll go into edit mode and show you how you can change that into an or expression so that any of those keywords contained within the email will cause that flow to run. There we go. So that's the flow just completed there. Hey, coconut yum. Uh, if I go into the edit, go into the ellipsis, go into settings. Now what I need to do is I need to combine all of these expressions. So it's probably easier for me to bring across 
something like Notepad Plus. Now, if I copy each of these into Notepad Plus, one after another, there we go. Now, I remove the at from the beginning of the uh, second and third expression. I put the function or at the beginning, an opening bracket, and then in between each of these expressions I put a comma, no need for one at the final end, but a closing bracket is required there. And so that gives us our full expression, which will basically check that one of these matches. I can go and delete all them, create a brand new one, paste the whole expression into there, and if everything's good it will save, which it has. And again, I can put this into test mode, save and test. And again, if I bring up my other user, new message, Damien, and we'll say, I like coconuts. Hit send, jump back to our flow here, and all being well, it will see that the word coconut is in the subject line and one of, of three words that uh, I'm looking for in my OR expression. And there we go, it's run, and there is I like coconuts. So three examples of how to use trigger expressions, and we've done it on the lists, we've done it on the email, and we've also done it on when a file is created. The, the thing to explore when doing this yourself is to maybe have a look at the trigger output. So you can uh, run a flow, look at the history, look at the outputs, and then you can try and evaluate the data that's available for you to do a trigger expression on. Uh, but I hope, hope this has been uh, useful. It certainly simplifies your flows. It's not as difficult as it might look. And uh, if you've uh, enjoyed the video, please make sure you like and you subscribe and leave your comments below. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.